Hey everyone, I've got a really cool sound design tip to share with you today. Some analog style synths do have a neat feature where the filter section can create its own sounds. This is known as self oscillation and adds extra notes on top of the main sound. And by adjusting the cutoff filter, you can change the pitch of these notes. It's a really great way to make your music more detailed and interesting. To show you what can be achieved doing this technique, and what I'm going to show you in this video is, let's listen to this sequence. Oh, that's pretty cool, right? All I've got is one sequence going on the ARP here, but it's doing a whole lot more than that. And that's what we're going to get to now. So let's go and build this sound from scratch. First, we need to start with a basic setting. So go to Utility and select Initialize Patch. And we're now onto a... Beautiful. Saw Square Wave. So for the first layer, we're going to use the Saw Square Bright. And for the filter, we're going to pick LPF UVI 1. Now, the reason I've picked this filter is because the only one in Omnisphere that makes its own sound by self oscillating. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lower this main gain to minus 12. So I don't absolutely deafen you when I do this next demonstration, because what we're going to do is turn the resonance, which will do the self oscillation. But first of all, this filter sounds like this. So a normal filter, but now if I turn resonance all the way up, listen to the sound now. So what we're doing there is the uh, cutoff. You get the fundamental tone that I'm playing, the C note, but you also get the some other tones on top of that, and the cutoff changes the pitches of those tones. So I'm just going to change this. That is on minus 12. That's okay. I just want to make sure we're down there so I don't absolutely deafen you with the high squeaks until we tame this sound. So I'm going to turn this cutoff to about 0.108 and activate unison. And with the unison, we're going to make the sound richer with this. And I'm going to adjust the depth to, I don't know, let's say. 3.327 and drop in octave. And we're going to say, uh, let's say we're going to go for the arpeggiator. And we are going to put a little sequence in. We're going to need an eight step sequence. And we're going to want the time ratio to be one eighth. And what we're going to do with this now is program the little sort of like sequence. On step two, I'm going to transpose it an octave. Step four, I'm going to go to plus seven. So it's going to go up a fifth. And the fifth step, I want to go up a fifth as well. And I'm going to go up an uh, octave on step seven. Okay, what these mean is semitones from the root note you play. So if I play a C, that will play the note C an octave higher. And if I play a C on that particular step, it's going to play a, a note G. So it's neither uh, it's neither going to be minor or major. So we're going to get this. And there's one thing to do is change this to chaos. So we actually have a random notes playing. So when I play the C again, having that missing step is nice because it, it then sort of breaks up the sequence and it's never going to be the same each sort of like loop through. And what we're doing now is going to go into the layer view. And we're going to 
um, make the cutoff control sort of play a sort of like different tune. So when the so because the as I said before, the filter makes its own sound. So what we want to do is right click this and go modulate, and we're going to say all mod sources, and we're going to go for mod envelope four. Now here we'll add a short sequence, and you just click on this little magnifier there just to zoom in. Now I'm not going to program this in live. Um, what we're going to do is sort of do one I prepared earlier. And what you can do is just use some of the existing presets and start messing around with that just to create your, your own. And now what we've actually got is this. So what I'm going to actually do, uh, I'm going to just check I've got unison. Yeah, I've got oh, unison down up to that. So okay, I just wanted to check that. And what we're going to do is get things a little bit more exciting by copying this layer, pasting it to a layer B, and I'm going to paste it to layer C. Now, in layer B, we're going to switch this synth sound to uh, what we're we going to feel a saw. We're going to change that to feel a saw. And what we're going to do is go into unison and I'm going to move this up an octave. That's why I wanted just to check I was down an octave before on this one. And then for layer C, we're going to go in here and we're going to change this oscillator here to. Um, see we want a cs80 so we'll go for cs80 cream and we're going to turn the unison off i'm going to go to harmonia and we're going to up this an octave and we're going to take it down an octave and what i'm going to do now i'm going to reduce this volume so you get to hear what's going on i'm going to just reduce it to say I reduce it to about 16, that should be enough. So what we've got now is this. So I'm going to move that back up to 12. And the reason why I lowered the volume is because sort of like the self-oscillating sounds do get a bit loud until we've tamed them with the effects. And that's where we're going to go now. Because all I'm interested in is putting the same effect on all three layers. So I'm going to use the common tab. And first one is we're going to check tame those frequencies by put a graphic 12 band EQ in. Now what I want to do is just nudge that 125 hertz up to almost the next sort of like notch in the dial there. And then we're going to go into more. And what we're going to do, we're going to turn the 16k, the 10k, the 6.3k, the 4k and the 2.5k all down. So absolutely nothing, and we get a... So we've actually tamed those particular frequencies now. But what we're gonna do is add some little interest here. What we wanna do is right click on 2.5k and go modulate with an LFO. And what I'm gonna do now is set the source to, let's see, 0.621. And we're going to change the rate to about 0.1 and make sure that smooth is right up there. And then what it'll do now is open that frequency gently and slowly. Watch the white dot come. Now what we're going to do now is right click on 4K and say modulate with LFO and then change that to LFO 1. Now, what I want to do is set the source to 0.397. So I don't want it to open as much because otherwise we're going to introduce more high frequencies. And what this is going to do is just going to soften the higher notes and add a little bit of variety to the sound. So it's like simulates the uh, filter opening as well. So what we're going to do now is add a chorus to it. And I want, 
What do I want? I want... Um, I want a chorus echo, so that's going to be under delay. That's why I couldn't find it. Chorus echo. And I'm going to change that to 17.4%. And I'm going to leave it. 179 will do. And I'm going to leave it at the stock settings. I'm going to leave it as it is. Then I'm going to put a tube limiter on, which is under dynamics. Again, I'm going to leave it that exactly as it is. And finally, I want some delay in this just to add more interest. I want a three times delay. I'm going to move that keyboard out of the way. And I'm going to change this now to... Let's go... About there will do nicely. So I'm going to set the wet-dry mix up a bit. And what we get now is this. That is kind of cool. So what we're going to do now is for those who've actually got a Sonic extensions, we can actually go even further. So I'm going to turn this Og Send up to about point four five six. will do. And we're going to go into the auxiliary channel. Now, you could use any of the Sonic extensions, but for this one, I'm going to use the Twisted Trees ones. And first of all, I want Sonic extension Twisted Root. And what I'm going to do, just to speed things up, is use the preset Silt. And for Sonic extension, I'm going to use Twisted Space. Now, the good thing with Twisted Space, it's not just a reverb. It can do delays as well. And this is what we're going to use it for. Because what I want to do is subsonic caverns. Um, now, I'll do the woodpecker first. Woodpecker echo. And we'll put some delay in first of all. And I'm going to leave that exactly where it is. And I gave the game away before. I'm going to go into Twisted Space and say I want subsonic caverns but well, I don't want it absolutely drowning in it I want to just bring that rain it in a bit and now we have this sound Now we can actually make this a little bit better um, by going to the length here and saying modulate with LFO and we'll use LFO2 and what we're going to do is turn the rate down to 0 0.10 again so it matches the opening of this sort of like filter part of it there and turn the source down to uh, sorry to turn the source up more to the point Wrong direction, 0.816 that will do nicely and we'll have the smooth on there. So what it's doing there, if we can just see, it's going to, as it that white dot moves, you see, it's just the shaded, it makes it smaller. So it makes it more staccato-y. And we get this. We can even go a little bit further with interest. That very last one, I want to put a four divider step on it. So now we'll get this. No two passes are the same, it's completely random, but absolutely beautiful for those ambient and electronic moments. And quite simple to program as you've seen. I do hope you enjoy this sort of sound design video and 
If you want to see more of this type of stuff, please let me know in the comments below. Give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any videos about sound design and general music news. And thanks for watching. And remember, stay creative, stay sonic, and I will see you in the next one.